blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the light of the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were the first to see the newborn light of the Christ child. May the light of God guide us as we seek him. This is a reading from the book of Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, 
and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 146, a selection from Psalm 146. We'll read responsibly by the half verse. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will shine throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, tell the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When John the Baptist heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, 
Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes. Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts here assembled be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. A virus is in the air, and if you've been exposed, count yourself blessed if you've been infected. Now, I'm talking about the Advent virus, and it's one that we all should want to catch. And this warning was sent to me over the Internet, that great sage source, and I thought I should share it with you. Warning, warning, Advent virus is going out. Be on the alert for symptoms of inner hope, peace, joy, and love. The hearts of a great many have already been exposed to this virus, and it's possible that people everywhere could come down with it in epidemic proportions. This could pose a serious threat to what has up to now been a fairly stable condition of conflict in the world. Now, some signs and symptoms of the Advent virus include a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than out of fear an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment, a loss of interest in judging other people, a loss of interest in interpreting the actions of others, a loss of interest in conflict, a loss of the ability to worry, and it notes that this is a very serious uh, symptom, frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation, Contented feelings of connectedness with others. Frequent attacks of smiling. An increasing tendency to let things happen rather than make things happen. An increased susceptibility to the love extended by others, as well as the uncontrollable urge to extend it ourselves. And it closes, please send this warning out to all your friends. This virus can and has affected many systems. Some systems have been completely cleaned out because of it. <laughs> well, have you come down with the Advent virus yet? You know, if you're exhibiting any of these aforementioned symptoms, you probably have. And what's more, if you're showing these signs of the virus, 
you're probably infecting others as well. In fact, you may be consciously and even gleefully spreading it. And then again, if you think about it, that's what the church is supposed to be doing right now. It is the church's job to infect the world with the contagious joy that this Advent promises. To nurture along this tiny, invisible Advent virus until it can grow and spread into pandemic proportions is the mission of the church's Christmas season itself. And we can't properly prepare for the arrival of Christ in our midst until we have come down with this fever and try our utmost to spread it around. But beware, there are a lot of germs floating around out there that will try to mimic the Advent virus. How can we be sure that we are infected with the real thing? How can we be sure that we aren't just suffering from a condition that only imitates some of the classic symptoms of the Advent virus? Well, our gospel lesson this morning can actually help us here. This morning's lesson from the Gospel according to Matthew has John the Baptist essentially asking this very question of Jesus. How do we know that you are the one who is to come? He's asking, what are the symptoms your presence elicits in my body, mind, and spirit? Now, it's worth noting that in Matthew's Gospel, at the start of Jesus' public ministry, John was convinced of Jesus' genuine nature. In chapter 3, verse 14, John had hesitated to baptize Jesus with his water baptism, humbly claiming that I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. But time and the cold reality of Herod's prison cell apparently had cooled John's advent fever. Now he is nearing the end of his prophetic call and subsequently his life. And he wants to see evidence and he wants to hear proofs of Jesus' messianic ministry. And how does Jesus respond to this challenge? Well, Jesus responds to John's disciples by providing them with a litany of symptoms, which when combined can lead to only one accurate diagnosis about Jesus' identity and the symptomology of the new messianic age. What are these signpost symptoms? The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor receive good news. In other words, Jesus is saying to John, hope and peace and joy and love are spreading. Everything you declared is coming. Take heart and rejoice, even now in the face of all that would deny you joy. There is a hope that is so sure it cannot be quenched. A peace so strong that it will not be quelled. A joy so full that it will not be overcome. A love so true that it cannot ever be denied. It is the love of Christ. And when we accept it, his peace and joy fill us, capture us, and send us out into the world in the indomitable hope of spreading his good news. That is what the genuine Advent virus is and what catching it does. So, do you want to catch the Advent virus? Or maybe just get exposed to it again and get a new dose? Well, let me suggest two surefire ways of doing that. And the first way is the simplest. In fact, it's the simplest way to catch any virus. Expose yourself to it. You know, we, we need such exposure because many conflicting emotions and thoughts and messages are competing for our minds and hearts right now, exposing us to stress and to indifference. The fact is, Advent can be a really difficult time for many people. For those who are alone, 
This can be the loneliest time of the year. For those who have lost a loved one, this is the time of year that that loss can be most felt. For those of limited means, this season's emphasis on material giving can just serve to underscore their lack of means. If we do not consciously and deliberately expose ourselves to this Advent virus, we just might miss it altogether. We need its infectious joy and its incurable hope if we are to journey through Advent and truly celebrate Christmas with any sense of peace or our desire to love stabilized. And so here's how to get infected with this needed virus. Expose yourself to people who have it. Mingle with the already infected. Those to whom Christ is a real meaningful presence in their lives. Seek out the community of the infected and the inflamed and the fervent and the feverish. You know, I think that is one of the best descriptions ever made for the gathered church at its best. Come and worship. You will catch the Advent virus every time. And here's the second way, and it's especially a, a good way if you've been infected with this virus before, but you find that its strength isn't what it used to be. Get reinfected. You know, over time, there's a lot that can contribute to our growing somewhat immune to this virus's effect personal circumstances, national and world events, fear of what the future will hold. Nothing will more surely give you a powerful reinfection than doing what Jesus describes in our gospel lesson this morning, following him and serving others. Draw close to Jesus. Answer our bishop's call to take up a spiritual discipline such as a more intensive practice of personal prayer, or following the offices of morning and evening prayer from the prayer book, or marking the progress of each day with the ancient practice of praying the hours, also in the prayer book, by the way, or reading your Bible more intentionally and frequently, or taking up the diocesan Bible challenge, you know, these disciplines make us more aware of Jesus' presence in our lives. And then, you know, once you have caught the bug again, start spreading it. Now, I've mentioned ways such as serving in the soup kitchen and the outreach center. and There have been a number of seasonal outreach events already this year, and there will be more in the new year. Serving others in these ways helps reinfect us. But I want to suggest something a bit different this morning. In the weeks ahead, and hopefully well into the new year and beyond, try cringling people, especially strangers. Now, to cringle someone, as in Chris Kringle, is a lot like you know, being a secret Santa. You do a kindness or a favor for someone without them ever knowing that you did it or without any expectation of a return favor. Kringling can start a whole bunch of Advent virus infections. This is how it happened in just one place. A couple of Christmases ago, while Caitlin was working as a barista in a Starbucks, one person's cringling exploded into an epidemic of goodwill. It was late in the day, and it had been a long one. A customer pulled through the packed drive through and asked Caitlin just how many customers behind her in the line had their orders still in the register queue to be paid. And finding out, the customer said, I'll pay for all of them. When the cu next customer in the line came to the pay window, Caitlin leaned out and said, Merry Christmas, your order has been paid for by a previous customer. 
The customer was joyously startled at this news as a broad smile literally broke across what was a formerly a sullen face. And the next customer in line was so moved that she paid for another group of customers newly arrived in the register queue. And so it went for over an hour as every single customer found their order paid for by yet another previous customer. That, that generosity was infectious, not only among the customers, but among the employees and even the manager, who all found their spirits suddenly listed, lifted. Joy was breaking out among them as their imaginations were caught up in what was happening. But that wasn't the end of it. The very next morning, the same phenomenon started all over again. It carried on throughout the rest of Advent and Christmas. And it even happened again and again at random moments for months after that. All that from one person's cringle. So, this Advent... Take up the spiritual discipline of cringling. <laughs> Go cringle somebody. <laughs> Secretly bless someone. Yeah. Now, you know, I, I really thought as I was coming into this this morning that I had come up with something really unique here to tell you. And come to find out, it's on the news today. The NBC Today Show and CBS Sunday Morning actually had several instances. They were talking about cringling. And let me share these with you. One of them is called racking. It's called random acts of Christmas kindness. People doing acts of kindness on the spur of the moment. There's even a Facebook page for people to post what they've done to inspire others. Look up racking or racks. You know, racks of cat. Blah, blah. Random acts of Christmas kinds. I mean, literally, I just got this about half an hour ago. Uh, number two, lay away angels. People drop off a check for any amount, usually large, and ask the cashiers to randomly pay off layaway balances for people in need. Third one, this is happening in the L.A. Fashion District. Parking lot workers are randomly paying for people's parking and purchases. And here's one you can hardly believe. Uh, the Canadian WestJet Airlines. This coming from an airline. They have set up an interactive screen in their terminal lobbies through which they ask passengers before their flight what they want for Christmas. And then at the destination, the wrapped gifts are waiting there for them, especially at this especially decorated ca carousel luggage, uh, luggage carousel. I think I'll stop. Yeah, I know. I think I'll stop complaining about some of the airlines. Wow. And, you know, I, I want to say that, you know, cringling doesn't actually have to cost anything. It doesn't have to cost money either. It could be a gift of time or a personal presence, too. Or it could be just an anonymous uh, gift, an anonymous greeting card. Be creative. The possibilities of who you could infect are nearly endless. As an Advent virus carrier, you will want to spread this infection to others. So spread the bug of infectious joy, of thoughtfulness, of reflection, and of renewal. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our trust together in the God who would infect us with joy by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all we have seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God.
He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We would for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers for the people are on page 8 of your bulletin, form 5. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Catherine, our presiding bishop, for Michael, Anne, Chip, and Bill, our bishops, for all other bishops, for Rick, our priest, all other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Barack, our president, Pat, our governor, and Jay, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, especially Plum Trent, Mavis Simon, Sandy Robinson, Marion Safred, Anne Montaigne, Patrick Haley, David DeBerry, Dottie Worth, Elaine Cook, Bob Love, Jamie Jackson, Catherine Conti, Pat DeVed, Beth Ely, Ezra Robertson, Sam Marshall, and Margot Jolly. And any other names you wish you may wish to acknowledge at this time. We pray to you, O oh Lord, Lord, have mercy. And also we pray for all those serving in the armed forces of our nation, especially Randy Williamson, Barney Briggs, Ethan Rogers, Heather Meyer Guyana, Jericho Guyana, Dominic Diaz, Amanda Altman, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepard, Wesley Welch, Spencer and Monette Wilson, Ralph Lee Clayton, Patty Bethay, Lathrop Smith IV, Katie Curran, Christina Bazacco, Charles Spencer, 
Boba Thay, Adam Wilson, Tommy Mancino, Edward Allen, Lance Hash, Chris Miles, and Jim Doniker. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. That being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for the lives of Pauline and Montgomery Rayfield and Gardner and Eva Worth, in whose memory the altar flowers are given. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Lucius Pullen, Garen Hardin, Tom Balsley, Claire Frazier, Hillary Martin, and Melinda Rice. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed St. Thomas, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to your For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in you. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
mention a couple of things real quick. Whoa, okay, I guess the Holy Land, the Holy Family uh, trip is happening, road trip is happening right now. Uh, the Holy Family is going to advance another window yet, and then next week we'll get to this window, which I guess is on the outskirts of Bethlehem, which uh, that's where our shepherd is right now. He's out in the field abiding. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then uh, the wise men, oh, they've made it, yeah, they're, they're advancing a window. they got a little farther to go, though, so they're coming from a ways away. But Christmas Eve, they'll all make it into the manger. No, nah, he, he, he still needs to abide a little more. Yeah. Um, just a thank you to those of you who came out yesterday despite the pouring rain and how miserable it was out. We uh, went out Christmas caroling to all of our shut-ins, and we really had a good time. It was soggy, but it was a good time. And uh, a lot of people, especially in a couple of the homes that we went into, uh, a lot of folks came gathering in as we were singing, and, and uh, which I guess is better than all of them getting up and leaving. But anyway, they came in and, and uh, really appreciated that gift. It was kind of a cringling of sorts right there. Oh, uh, there is in your bulletin the poinsettia orders that, you know, it says right on here, the deadline to place an order is Thursday, December 12th. Now, <laughs> now if you're looking at your calendar, yeah, you know, it's past the 12th, but as it says on there, last chance. So please do, if you're planning to order a poinsettia for um, Christmas Eve, please do get that into the office right away. Any other announcements to make this morning? Hmm? Oh, Tom. Also, I understand Bill Sutton's mother uh, died. Tom, what, do you know when the services are again? Okay, so Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Fayetteville tomorrow at 2. All right, thanks, Tom. Let's, let's do keep those in our prayer. John, you have an announcement. I'm always going to Anyway, just wanted to keep everybody up to date. Uh, I was a little late getting here today, but I'm thrilled I got here in time to listen to the story of the racking up and the, and the cringling up, and the, I think that's awesome. Uh, we are kind of racking up in some ways. Um, the spirit is moving gradually as the end of the season and Christmas gets busy. Um, uh, we are now sitting about $25,000 behind last year, which we think is reasonable for people as they make their prayerful end of year decisions. Um, if you, um, and that's all I have to say about that, keep up the good spirit. I'm truly preaching to the choir here, so I won't, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on that, because if you're here, St. Thomas is in your heart, so I don't need to say much more. Um, I do like the idea of dovetailing on what was said in the morning service about gifts that we can give and racking people up and giving them Christmas spirit. Bob Cook, one of our interim pastors, had a little quote that he loved, which was, each one bring one. And I would like to invite each one of you to maybe think about that. One of the gifts you could give to someone else is, by the middle of the week, think of someone you'd call and invite them to join you for services here. This is such a good time, and I think the energy in this church right now is, is building in a positive way. And please share that with someone. And uh, I can't think of anything better than pulling up, getting someone in your car, and and uh, sprinkling them all the way to St. Thomas. So please think of that. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, let me just clarify something, if I may. We're $25,000 from hitting our goal 
We're not 25,000 behind last year. We're 25,000 from getting. Yeah. We're 25,000 from where we were last year at the end of the pledge drive. At the end of the pledge drive. Year, please go ahead and do it because the finance committee and the vestry are moving forward and the clock is ticking. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, you've seen it in the newsletter and we've had it in the news in, in the bulletin for weeks, but next Sunday is Cantata Sunday and the choir has truly been working very hard to get this together for, for all of us to enjoy Christmas more. So next Sunday, we'll present throughout the service, not in just a park and bark manner, uh, but spread throughout the service, the cantata Gavaldi's Gloria. It's worth coming to see and hear and experience. Um, and we do it out of love for all y'all. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. And you are exalted as head above all. All things come of you, O Lord. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you send him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and blessed Thomas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is kingdom. the gifts of God, for the people of God.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer and his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.